everybody. Welcome back to the show. My first guest tonight is a Grammy and Tony Award-winning actor. He recently received two, count them, two Oscar nominations for his work in the new film, One Night in Miami. I was born by the river In a little tent Oh, and just like the river I've been running Ever since It's been a long A long time coming But I know Change gonna come Please welcome back to A Late Show, Leslie Odom Jr. Leslie, thanks for being here. Oh, my pleasure, Stephen. Thanks for having me. Well, I want to, I want to get to that incredible performance um, in, in just a moment and for the new film, One Night in Miami. But first, congratulations on the new baby boy, Abel Phineas. That yeah. is... That is big news. And a second child, right? This is your second. That's our second. That's our second. How do how do my bags look on uh, on late night, on Zoom? You look good. We have, we, have, we have digitally removed them. Nobody at home will know how ragged you look to me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now, now, this is your second child. How is, I think we have here, yes. Okay, this is Lucille holding yeah. her little brother. That's a beautiful shot. How is she adjusting? Because some... Older siblings say, okay, take him back now. How is she handling it? <laughs> As you can see with the crown on and everything, she's taken to it very, very well. She yeah. she knows her position in the house and his position. You know, she's letting him know early who the princess is. <laughs> she's, she's doing very well. What about your adjustment as a parent? Because now, A, you and your wife are, are on man-to-man, -man, you know, man-to-man -man defense here. <laughs> you know, one more and you got to go to zone. But... Yeah. Uh, are you? Do you have uh, things that you've learned from being a parent of one that you've got all this wisdom that you can now use to raise your second child or to, to, to add another child to the mix here? Do you have? Do you have pearls of wisdom that you've learned from your first parenting experiences? You know, I speaking of pearls of wisdom, I I really thought that that's what fatherhood was about, right? I thought that that's what it entailed. I was going to open up. My book, my literal book, and I would just, I would just read to my children a couple of times a day. I would say, gather round, and I would just impart wisdom to them and tell them, you know, that's all the lesson for today. That's the lesson for today. But uh, you know, my daughter has taught me that um, it's just really so much more about. She tells me what she needs, essentially. You know, like because mm -hmm. you're you're parenting the kid that you have. So the first, I feel like the first part of this is really just getting to know Abel and he'll tell me what he needs to learn. Now, um, another congratulations in order, as I said before in the intro, two Oscar nominations for your performance as, as the great Sam Cooke in yeah. One Night in Miami. Um, I always like to ask where people were when they found out about the nomination. Did it catch you by surprise? Were you hanging out, waiting for it? What was the moment like? I was asleep. Very exciting story to tell you. I was deep into REM sleep. It's that it happens very early in Los Angeles. Is what oh, like of course. Five. I got, yeah. And uh, uh, yeah, I got I got one of those phone calls. My team did let me know. They said we know. You know that we know you don't want to know what tomorrow is. We know you're not going to get up and watch, but just leave your phone on. Be a grown up, and leave your phone on in case we need to reach you in the morning. And so I did that at the very least. Did you celebrate? I did. Yeah, my uh, Nicolette was still. You know, she was about to pop, so I had some champagne all by myself. It's been a celebration ever since, though. You know, it's such a. Uh, you know, the Oscar nomination is just such a. a moment you know so it's uh it's been a celebration in the weeks that have followed with what well, you've got you've got the grammy and the tony and now the oscar nomination let's see if you can get you an emmy for tonight's interview we're, we're just going to egot it up <laughs> we're going to egot it up in one fell swoop okay i want to talk to you about uh, talk to you and i also want to talk to the audience about this performance as sam cook first of all let's just talk for a second about the idea of the movie itself we had regina king on here to talk about it and it's this extraordinary story of four um, great black Americans meeting based on a true story. Yeah. And, and t tell the people what happened, what the true story it's based on and what the story of the movie tells. 
Yes, true story. Uh, young Cassius Clay, February 1964, is going to go down to Miami and fight his first heavyweight championship bout against Sonny Liston. Nobody expects Cassius to win this fight, of course, except for Cassius. Uh, but his, his three closest friends show up in Miami to help him celebrate the night, and they happen, they just happen to be Malcolm X, Jim Brown, and Sam Cooke. And so that's the true story. Uh, they spent the entire evening after Cassius won. There's no victory party planned for young, for young Muhammad. So they spent the evening palling around in Malcolm's uh, motel room uh, at one of the all-black motels down in Miami and this movie nobody knows what the gentleman talked about in the hotel room where it happened as it were but Kent Powers uh Oscar nominated Kent Powers for uh received a nomination for this beautiful script he supposes what these men might have talked about all night long it's the the, the your your performance everyone's performance is incredible on this yeah. but also Power's writing is amazing. It's the sort of writing that I associate with Patty Chayefsky, which is every character gets their moment to say what they're about. And when they do, you go, oh, I think I agree with them. Like, <laughs> like it's very balanced. And there's this great tension between Sam Cooke, the character of Sam Cooke, and the character of Malcolm X about what the position is, what, what a, a black man of notoriety in the 1960s should do to better his own people. And yeah. tragically, both of those men, I don't believe, survive another year or maybe barely more than a year for one of them. Uh, yeah, no, that's... Sam, Sam Cooke dies within the year or just shortly after, correct? Sam, Sam dies in December mm -hmm. and Malcolm dies, I believe, in, in February. Malcolm is assassinated in February. Well, next. besides the, the human tragedy of anyone's death, Sam Cooke has been one of the, the great lost voice in my opinion, of the 20th century. And I never thought I'd hear anything like that again. And while you still sound like Leslie Odom, you have mm -hmm. captured this extraordinary tone and style and soul of Sam Cooke. What was that process like to become, to embody that voice? Because I never thought I'd hear it again and I got chills every time you would start singing in that movie. What was the process? Did you go all the way back to the soul stirs? What did you do Thanks. to sort of get get yeah, accustomed to him? Yes, I went in chronological order. I I, have, I was I'm a fan too, you know. A long in, in in many ways, Sam is one of my teachers. Singing is an oral tradition. It's passed down from generation to generation. We learn the way we're supposed to approach a song and what is required of us uh, as storytellers. So, uh, but I went back to the beginning and I really. Um, kind of tried to understand the evolution of his sound and um, try to understand, you know, kind of like the, the psychology of it, you know, for maybe why he was making the choices that he was making. Um, I have to tell you, I did not, for real, true story, I did not think that the person that they hired to play Sam Cooke was going to sing the Sam Cooke songs. I th we've seen we've seen lots of actors. You know, Rami Malek just did it. You know, beautifully he plays Freddie Mercury, and nobody asked Rami to sing the Freddie Mercury song. So I did not think that that was going to be a part of my well. <laughs> my no, job. Uh, listen. Uh, but then again, not every person you ask to play a part is Leslie Odom Jr. I have seen you sing in person before. I was there early on in Hamilton. I was on the yes. third row in the center, and when you came out to do Room Where It Happens, I got pinned back to my seat, and I turned to our mutual friend, Carrie, right afterwards and said, who the f*** is that? <laughs> um, I, I, Regina King was on, as I said before, talking about this film a little over a month ago, and I was asking, I was talking about you and your performance, and she said, you know... I, I, was, I wasn't really that familiar with Hamilton. And she goes, I, I really was that nationwide commercial that sold me. Now, admittedly, those are fine commercials and you do a fine job in it. Does it surprise you at all that that's what pushed you over the top for her? Can I tell you, not at all, because you know that look. That's a good partnership. That's a good brand partnership. When a, when a commercial, when a nation, when an insurance commercial is getting you roles of a lifetime. <laughs> 
as Sam Cooke, that, that's a good brand partnership. But the, at my concerts, I would sometimes do a poll of the audience at the end, you know, and I'd say, who's here for Hamilton? And of course, you know, 85, 90% of the people are clapping. 5% of the people are there because of some other TV show they saw me on in the early 2000s, Grey's Anatomy or Gilmore Girls, or whatever. And 5% of the people were there because of the nationwide commercial. So, you know, all these years later and nationwide still on my side, you know, it's still cut him a check nationwide. <laughs> That's inclusive sponsorship. Leslie, great to see you again. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me. One Night in Miami is available now on Amazon Prime. Leslie Odom Jr., everybody. We'll be right back with physicist Michio Kaku. <laughs> 